The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by its hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of rmconair.com or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Everybody doing up in the studio today. I know I got some folk in here, so don't y'all act like I'm in here by myself. How y'all doing up in here? We're chilling. We're doing good. So one person said he's chilling. He's doing good. What about you, Ron? Laron is he's acting like he ain't here. Kiki, you good? I'm great. Kiki said she great. She gonna take it to a whole other level. Well, I want you to know I'm representing Hollywood today, and. Uh, Oh, do I need this baby? You want me to get up? She said, look, get on up. So I'm representing Hollywood today. I don't know if they can see my face. Because this is the city of Angels, Los Angeles, California. And I thought about it. I said, you know, this is Hollywood. This is the place that people come from all over the world to become famous. They want to be somebody, you know, other than probably who they were created to be. But the real deal, they want to be famous in Hollywood. They come from the South, the East, the West, the North. Well, this is basically the West. But, you know, they come from everywhere. So I'm here. I was born and raised here. So I figured I better play my role. I'm in Hollywood where my shades at. Thank you, baby. This is my daughter. These are her shades. So I want to say good evening to my listeners and my viewers. I know y'all somewhere. Oh, I see a camera right there. Hi, you looking at me? What's up? What's up? Well, this is Wednesday's woman. Ladies, now, let me see. Kiki, what's the phone number to this spot? Because somebody may be listening to me. They might know me. and They might want to call me and say something. So 323-965-1600. 323-965-1600. It will ring, ring. This is the phone right here. You see this phone? It's a real phone. I, hear, I don't hear no dial tone. No, is this thing hooked up? Oh, I hear dial tone. Oh, you can't hear it. Okay, look. Well, okay, I'm, I think I'm going to hang up the phone that ain't got no dial. Well, so, Wednesday's woman. That's who I am. That's my alias. Wednesday's woman. That's my AKA. Wednesday's woman. I'm the middle of the week woman. I'm that woman that you call when you just can't seem to get it together. You have an idea. You have an inkling of something that you want to do. You feel it on the inside, but you're just not sure how to get this out. Crystal! I know you Wednesday's woman. That's right. That's me. That's me. Now, I'm not the only Wednesday's woman on this planet. Now, I said, Wednesday's woman is the woman that owns and wears many hats. And I got some hats over here. Did y'all see my one of my opening hats over here? It says, woman of faith. Kiki, yeah, you see that? That's one of my hats. I got another one I came in here with. It's over there somewhere. I think I pulled it off before I put my wig on. But the point of it is, Wednesday's woman, she can come out of a bag, baby, and have her whole situation in check. Whatever she needs, whatever you need, she can come out of a bag. Or I have my bags. I didn't I didn't array my bags up here. I'll bring my bags next week because I'm going to be here every Wednesday, you all. 
So the bottom line is we are inspiring our women. We are enlightening them with, I won't say new knowledge, but maybe something that they have not considered or perceived yet. Because I feel that I have been given a lot, uh, meaning my mission and my, my, my path. And it, the word of God, I'm, I'm a woman of God as well, the woman of the most high God, okay? And I know the word tells us that to whom much is given, much is required. And so when you consider the fact that Wednesday's woman represents the middle of the week, they can call that hump day, Wednesday. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Stop laughing, LaRon. <laughs> well, what was woman made for? She was made for man. And reproduction, what happens when you reproduce? You got to do a little humping somewhere. So the thing is, Wednesday's woman has been named exactly right. Now, I have a poem that I wrote called Wednesday's Woman. I give honor to women of the struggle. Women who have passed on a legacy to those who remain true to the game that ends the struggle. I give honor to the millennium woman, hello. <laughs> a woman on a mission, a woman on a quest to be the best. A woman who owns and wears many hats. I told you about the hat lap. It's a fact that woman is a Wednesday's woman. She's the daughter, the sister, the girlfriend, the wife, the mother, the teacher, the miracle worker. She's the driver, the lender, the tender, the keeper of the covenant of love. What you know about love? Hmm. Y'all acting like I'm in here by myself. I know I've had to call Johnny Morris after a while because you know he that's my partner right there. Johnny Morris, where you at? <laughs> Wednesday's woman holds the key for all humanity. She's a believer that flows with universal liberty. She lives in peace with all nature in harmony. She is the woman that cries in the midnight hour, wailing for the souls of them that are lost. She's the woman that reaches out to the poor and the needy and enjoys the fruit of her labor, no matter the cost. Go forth, my sisters. Rule, you California queens. Possess your territory. Walk a mile to your dream. I'm talking about a Wednesday's woman. That woman is going to be able to get the job done whenever you call her morning, noon, or night. Do you know a Wednesday's woman like that? You ain't met one yet? Well, see, I'm talking to a brother named Relic. Now, you know that name means something of, of oh, this is an old Relic. Yeah, this is <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we're going to talk to Relic a little later. But you, you say you know a woman that, that can handle that. She's that woman that can get the job done. You call on her. She, she, she's right there for you. You know a Wednesday's woman. Um, There's, there's women like that that are out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. You probably what? have to go and probably have to go and search for her and find her in different places. Oh no places, no no so. no no! You ain't got to search. <laughs> I got the number one Wednesday's woman right here. I'm right here before your eyes. So I give glory to the Most High. I sing Hallelujah because it's Him that who. What am I getting this mixed up? It's Him that who has made me <laughs> to be the great woman that I am. You understand? Because see. When you are Wednesday's woman, you get a chance to be the greatest fantasy of your man. You get a chance to be the greatest dream come true for your friends. You get a chance to be some of anything and whatever you desire to be. But it's got to be good, though, right? So I say to you Wednesday's women that don't know that you're a Wednesday's woman, you better start realizing, standing up and testifying, say, yeah, I am that woman. I'm the woman of standard. I'm a woman of morals. I am a woman of great values. I'm a woman of leadership. I got skills, baby. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, this ain't just a dollar bill. It's a five dollar bill. I remember the day I used to work for one of these for one hour. Now, you know that was back in the 70s or something like that. <laughs> so now we get these. I give these away. You know what I'm saying? You need it here, baby. Get Take it. It's, it's just a paper. But the point of it is, Wednesday's woman is rich, honey. She is rich in her spirit. She is rich in her soul. She's rich in her mind. She carries a power that is insurmountable. 
He is over here cracking up. Laron, I'm gonna put you on spot. <laughs> He ain't never seen that like this. Ain't never heard yeah. about that like this. This is a little young school boy. We got to teach him a thing. That's another thing a Wednesday's woman. She's the <laughs> teacher, baby. She will teach the young woman how to be a good woman to your man, your boyfriend, whoever you are with. She's going to teach you how to be the best that you can be, a Wednesday's woman. That's right. She is that woman that when you read the Bible, she's that, that cunning woman, that wise woman. You understand? See, some women, they be hide. They be playing games, you know, they be hiding all that good thing they have inside. But it's like, don't be hiding. It's time to let it yeah, out. Gotta... People need us. Don't you need a good Wednesday's woman in your life? Yeah. See? I mean. See? So I'm calling out all you women that's been hiding all your good qualities, all your good your, your, your good magnetism. You understand? You, you have a magnet to draw, but you've been hiding it. Maybe because you didn't know. But I'm here to teach you a few things. To uncover yourself, baby, and come out. Let the real you rise. Because it's time. Yeah, we're in Hollywood. There's a lot of fake stuff going on. I know. On. I know. That's but the, the point. point of it is, we need the real to rise up and still represent Hollywood. Because Hollywood, to me, is just film, television. You know, it's just a way of getting your message out. You understand. But they put a twist on it. They got to put some extra stuff that really didn't happen. want you to believe some other stuff. You know, uh, we got to make it real, make it plain. So, Wednesdays, woman, you are in the house on tonight. I ain't heard my phone ring, so I guess everybody's asleep. Now, I'm going to say this about me. I'm a writer. I'm a singer. Not just a songwriter. I write stories. I can write plays, I write articles, I write poetry, I write, oh my goodness, you know, just write. I write letters yeah. for business because one thing we have to do is communicate effectively. And when you have a woman that is representing all of the qualities of a Wednesday's woman, she is able to communicate on levels that the average woman cannot. She can go into the boardroom. She can go into the bathroom. She can go into whatever room is necessary, the bedroom, and she can handle her business. She knows how to handle her business. Yeah, you I understand? Yeah. The Bible said call for the cunning woman, you know, the mourning woman, women that's going to labor and, and, and cry out for someone other than themselves. See, a, a, a Wednesday's woman is not selfish. Put it that way, too. She's not selfish. She's a giver. And she basically has all of her needs met because she's got everything right. She's taking care of her business. You know, she puts everything in its proper priorities. Everything has to be in order. That's a strong woman right there. Talk about it. It's and see on that hat woman. over there, that, that, that woman of faith hat, it, it represents the scripture, Proverbs 31, uh, 30, I believe. And I have that on there. It's over there. I can't hardly see it from here, but I think I have a copy over here. And it says... Yeah, that one over in the corner, in the, in, the, in the black and white over there, it looks like this. Uh-huh, that's, that's the Wednesday's woman. She was out on the beach. She's representing Mother Earth right here. Oh, she looks like that. That's not the, the actual woman, is it? That is the actual That's the woman. actual Wednesday's woman? That's, that's Wednesday's woman right there. Wow. So now Wednesday's woman, she is not afraid. There's a scripture, like I said, Proverbs 31, 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. A Wednesday's woman needs to be recognized for all of her fine qualities, for her many talents, for her many abilities. When you read Proverbs 31, it talks about she buys uh, fabric, she makes various things and she sells them. She goes out and she buys property. She plants her a vineyard. She's able to feed the community, feed her family off of what she's raised in her garden. This woman is a businesswoman. She handles her family. She gets up early, talks about the virtuous woman. That's what she, but see, I took all that and said she's a Wednesday's woman. could bring it into our time because, see, the virtuous woman was written in the Bible days. Wednesday's woman came about in the year of the millennium, in the, in the, in the t 2000s. You know, that's okay. what she came on to say. Yeah. And so, but she encompasses... You know, the, the whole fullness of woman. You know, she is that womb that has carried and brought forth life. That's who Wednesday's woman is. She is the giver. 
Okay, she is the breeder. <laughs> she's the one who you know if you get with this Wednesday's woman, she's going to be fruitful and y'all are going to multiply because all of her stuff is working because she's anointed. She's gifted by the most high. You understand? See, when you're a Wednesday's woman, you have to be able to recognize, first of all, who you are and who you represent. Wednesday's woman represents the most high. She knows that her title and her label is of, of queenship. You understand? She, she represents the kingdom of the most high. And see, the feminine personality and the Godhead, I believe, represents the spirit of the most high, the Holy Spirit. That's, to me, my understanding of the feminine energy in the Godhead, the Elohim, you understand? So, Wednesday's woman says, I am a keeper of peace. I follow peace with all men, women, boys, and girls. It is my duty to obey them that have rule over me. And who has rule over a woman? Anybody in the house know? Oh, no one but God, right? I would have to say God. Well, actually, the man. The man. And you know, he has the, the title. Man? You man? Baby, what? Give me some. Give me <laughs> some. Thursday, Thursday man. man. Don't you know about that? See? He, he that must have been reading my notes. <laughs> <laughs> That's him. Thursday's man. He he brings the thunder, baby. <laughs> when Thursday's man comes on the scene, everything gets in line because he is the express image of the Most High God. He is well equipped, so you don't even have to open your mouth. You can feel the vibration of the of the power of Thursday's man. And when him and Wednesday's woman get together, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? You got Friday's child coming out of that. <laughs> see, see. Uh, and then Saturday and Sunday grandchildren. Huh? See, it's all it's all a big family love party, baby. Yeah. What's up? We just Seven need to recognize our roles. Recog Do we have a caller, Kiki? You have a caller. What? The caller says they want you to sing something. Oh, that must be somebody I know. Oh, Lord, that means they must want me to go over there and play this piano or something, huh? Absolutely. Well, first of all, since y'all see my guest in the studio, Relic, mm -hmm. say something. He didn't bring his guitar, so I'm upset with him. So hello, hello. go and say something to my people here. Hey, everyone. How y'all doing? My name is Relic, R-E-L-I-C. I uh, just pronounced with a short E, <laughs> short I. But, um... Yeah, I, I'm a special guest on this show, and I'm definitely honored to be here. Um, I couldn't, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now on a Wednesday afternoon. I get to hear about a Wednesday woman, and I'm, I would love to meet that lady. Um, I'm thinking, I'm hoping, I'm praying that um, any woman that doesn't meet those standards would definitely have an opportunity to become that woman. Um, that would be kind of dope. And um, that's pretty much where I'm at with this i actually I actually have a song that i wrote for a woman that's just like the wednesday's woman hopefully we'll get a chance to play that song later on that that will be like a perfect song for that lady okay. well you see i didn't change positions so that means i am ready to do what i need to do Whoever this caller was that requested, did you have a song title that you requested, caller? <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. I am in RMC Studios. I'm live. Can y'all see me? Hey, Mama, are you watching me? Oh, Mama, I forgot to button up my cuff. I'm finna button my cuffs, Mama. You taught me better than that. Give a shout out to my Mama. She's a Wednesday's woman too. I guess that's how I learned to be Wednesday's woman. Kiki, how I sound over here? I sound good. I look good, too. I got enough light. I'm so excited. And I want y'all to know, I do represent Wednesday's woman. I am a piano player. I, I've been a church musician for, oh, my goodness, for about 40 years. <laughs> but I'm only 35, so I guess I started when I was in the spirit realm. <laughs> so let's see. What can we get out of here? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? I didn't hear that. Can you hear that? I can't hear it. Am I supposed to hear it? It would help me if I could hear what I'm playing. <laughs> okay. 
okay. Well, we're gonna work on getting this piano so I can hear it. Can my guests hear it? Can I'm still playing, but I don't hear anything. If I can get a, another tap in here to give me a different flavor. How's everybody doing? Y'all know I'm a jazz singer too, right? I used to sing in the clubs back in the day. Let's hear it for the Pied Piper. Woo! 1980-something. <laughs> Marla's Memory Lane. I'm going to give a shout-out to Marla Gibbs because she is definitely a Wednesday's woman. And really... Next time you come in to be with me in the studio, if you don't bring your instrument, I'm going to put you out. Okay, so now I feel like I can't play at the same time. But this song goes, Good evening, Father. take this moment and say thank you to my Heavenly Father, the Most High. Thank you to your beautiful spirit and your wonderful word. And thank you for the angels and all the hosts of heaven that is available to me in my entirety. Thank you for my protection and my children's and family's protection. You know what you do for me. You take good care of me. So I want to send a shout out to Mr. Johnny Morris, our Thursday's man, one of our Thursday's men, for making this possible for me to be here on tonight. This is my debut. It's going to get better. It's going to get greater. It's going to be a packed house because we're going to command and demand it to be that, right? Yes. So, without any further ado, I'm going to come back over there. Did you bring your CD relic? Okay, can you give that to Kiki, and then we're going to listen to your music. And right now, Kiki, that CD that's in there, the, the CD that's in there, could you put that on? Because I'm a soldier. Number one, yeah. I'm a soldier. And this is going to be a friend of mine, Brother Norman Hutchins. It's one of my favorite songs. I got Ellie Mike done stepped into the studio. What's up? See, 
you you know when you come into the room where I am, I'm gonna call it out. Y'all can't be incognito hiding up in here. But I'm going back over there to my other spot, and then we're gonna listen to this song that I have for uh, uh, these battlefield people. Anybody on the battlefield fighting for the Lord God Most High? This is this this is for us. You ready? There it is. Listen, I'm a soldier. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. I know he don't necessarily need my help, <laughs> but since I have been called and chosen, fighting the good fight of faith and also being able to just fight my urges to do things that are not always right. So I'm on that battlefield fighting for the good things. So Relic, you got a song that you 
want to dedicate to the Wednesday's woman? Yeah, yeah. I actually have a song. Um, it's called Love and R. Love and R. It's called Love and R. And what was what was kind of um, interesting, and I don't know if it was coincidence or not, but it was um, that that song is definitely um, it picks it it describes the perfect woman, uh-huh. and she kind of fits a little bit of that which you were describing as the Wednesday's woman. Okay. So I would All like to play it. Um, the beat was actually produced by Modo. And um, I wrote that song, um, you know, just kind of thinking about what a woman would be like if she were perfect. And, mm-hmm. and this is what it kind of came out as. <laughs> All right, let's hear this song. Uh-huh. A lady familiar with success, mind of a beautiful, humble princess. Probably have to be a part of the aristocracy, but one that we created. But not required. When I'm around her, I feel inebriated. Drunk love, no cuffs. Just free with the mind. Creative with the grind, no fuss. She'll be thinking, how can she contribute to me being the best? She'll know she's a part of my achievements when they manifest. She'll know my heart, and I won't switch up. Cause she never would from the start. She'll have her mind on a million, a million in due time. She'll say grind. I joke and tell her, just cause you fine, don't mean we could live off a dime. She'll say, I gotta get mine. Best way to soothe my mind is when she read all of my dollar signs. She'll relax me, telling me life is best when it's just me and her passing time. It's priceless when we celebrate. And every little step we'll take will be better than every little step we made. A loving relationship that was put together our way. I'm motivated for a new beginning and we was better looking days. for better days. And now you found me. Tell me what you think, and I'll tell you everything. I'm passionate about what I speak. This is what it is. This is what love is supposed to be. We was looking for better days, and now you found me. Tell me what you think, and I'll tell you everything. I'm passionate about what I speak. This is what it is. This is what love is supposed to be. Brand new lady, but I'm the same me. Taking my time, I'm going to take you there. Have you been in love lately? This is what love is. This is what it feels like when I hold you close and tight. I try to give her this. I try to give her that. But it ain't enough, so I gotta give her hugs and kisses. Hello, Mrs. Ariel, I see. Success and victory. Remember me? Me? Now we're one more step closer to our dreams. Passion is what we need. Previously, I couldn't put my finger on what was missing. But I know now, so I'm out on a mission. I got a lot of love to be given. So come and get it. Forget about everything you thought before. This is better living. Love is invisible, cause in your heart is where it's hidden. I used to view couples with no smiles and think they didn't give her. But the love hmm. is within. You gotta dig deep. Alright, so where is this song playing? Where is it available right now? I like that. I do like that. Yeah, um, you could actually find that on uh, iTunes, Amazon.com. Uh, it also plays on Pandora. Okay. Uh, it plays on. Um, there's a new website that um, they put up for beats, you know, like the Beats by Dre. Mm-hmm. It plays on there as well. Exactly. Yeah. That's beautiful. Beautiful. So, yeah. Okay. Well, you must let our listeners and viewers know how to contact you or how to yeah, um, get something from you. I would say the best place. Um, I write, a lot of my music I write about is about love and spirituality and a lot about um, positive hip hop. And um, I've been mixing um, uh, hip hop with rocket music lately. And so that's why you, you met when, um, you know, I do play the guitar a little bit, but um, you can definitely find a lot of me. You can find me on um, Facebook dot com forward slash I made it better. And um, I also have a website called um, if you go to what the website is kind of long. So you got to have your pen and your pad ready if you want to <laughs> remember it. It's um, www dot relic vision dot Wix dot com forward slash r vision that's r the letter r vision when that's one word and um i'm actually doing a show on the 22nd at bordner's in hollywood okay. and that's um that's going to be 12 dollars in advance if you get your tickets and uh 14 at the door but um you can get your tickets online at um aftonshows.com forward slash relic mm-hmm. and relic, so um relic, relic. Okay. yeah 
Well, I want to thank you for stopping by. Thank and, you. And uh, letting us, you know, hear some of your music. And we look forward to working with you in the definitely near future and getting some tracks together. You know, I can maybe put some of my vocals on some yeah. of my work. Got a beautiful voice, you by know, the way. I've got sons probably around yeah. your age. So we can hook that whole package up because that's something that me as a mother with children that are in music it is my desire to make sure my children are in the best positions that they can be right. within the entertainment industry and i'm a praying woman so i'm not always just out there pushing for anything you know right, because i yeah. know anything is not always the right thing you right. know we have to have something special that's designed for us and you know that sometimes takes a little waiting and uh, there's a song they that wait upon the lord yeah. shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Yeah, so we are waiting because we know when it comes this time, we're going to be totally ready and we're going to latch on. We're going to flow <laughs> to higher heights. So, again, like I said, thank <laughs> you. Now, I know my time is moving. I'm going to give a few shots out. I wanted to make some calls. I, I probably need like two or three more hours added to my one hour. Thank you. <laughs> Talking to my executive producer now. <laughs> you know who you are. Now, this is my friend and sister, Dr. Peggy Morris Turner. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Now, she wrote this book, and it says, I always chose the wrong man until I chose Jesus. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. And I was reading <laughs> some of this book, and I had to text her and tell her I really enjoy her writing skills. She's a good writer. She's a playwright as well. She moved from being here in L.A. with all of, you know, I should say me and the rest of the homegirls because we were working and doing church, you know, music and ministry together. But she has moved all the way to Virginia. But that's all been good. She's working with her granddaughter and her great-grandbaby and everything. She's a family woman. But her book, I Always Chose the Wrong Man Until I Chose Jesus, talks about domestic violence that she dealt with, talks about just her having to basically help her mom raise her, you know, younger siblings. And she, you know, I think she dropped out of high school, um, but she still became, as she is, a doctor in um, theology and she has an outreach ministry, Daughters of the King, and they had their big event last year. And uh, she's going to do it again this year. And she also wrote another book, All Lights Green. So that's saying, go, go, go. Don't be stopping at nothing because it ain't yellow and it ain't red. It's green, all of them. Keep moving. Put the pedal to the metal. And then go. You know, read the go. Okay. So... Sister girl, I was going to call you. I know it's late in Virginia, and I don't want to, you know, do too much because my hour will be gone. But I do want to give a shout-out to you. And I think your book is available on Amazon and all of that. But if you all want to get information on this book, call me, 323-239-9439. Again, 323-239-9439. I had to come out of my Hollywood glasses because I want to try to see my face. I ain't hiding, honey. I am the real deal. And then... I have another sister, dear sister, Dr. Deborah Jackson. Bam! She wrote a book called 12 Connections of Love. Got to get it connected 12 ways. That's a whole lot of ways. So I was reading in her book, getting an understanding of how all these connections of love are made. So Dr. Deborah Jackson, her book is also available on Amazon and all these other online stores. 12 Connections of Love, good reading. Of course, if you can't find it, call me, and I'll definitely call her and say, I got somebody who wants your book. And then this is another ooh, good book that I found. A friend of mine actually gave this to me as a gift. This is uh, Brother Charles Barnes' daughter. She wrote this book. And see, these are women. These are all Wednesday's women. I know they are, honey. They are powerful women. And this is three powerful ones right here. And so Walking in Kingdom Authority, a practical jumpstart guide to kingdom living and i would say these books will help you become a better woman you could already be a wednesday's woman and you feel like you just need to be a little sharper on your on your things your skills and stuff there are books self-help guides i have actually also put a self-assessment form together that says you know just some basic questions today i am in need of what 
my strengths are, my weakness is, I need to change my, uh, you know, so sometimes we need to do a self-assessment to see, am I that Wednesday's woman? And for the men, am I that Thursday's man? <laughs> and for the youth, am I that Friday's child, that Friday's youth? So the thing is, we have to come together also as women. We can't keep hating on each other. Can't be jealous because I got blonde and brown hair today and black hair tomorrow. <laughs> and I got a, you know, a weave next week and a natural after that. That's my prerogative. Just get with me and be, girl, you be doing that hair, but <laughs> you go, girl. Don't be hating on me and talking about me. It's all that, you know. It's, oh, that's not necessary. It's time is out. And I'm, I'm speaking to sisters that are in the same family hating on each other. You know, y'all cut that out. I know about that. Cut that out. Now, we also want to speak about our health and wellness because I know at the age that we are, I'm a mother and a grandmother and I'm a wife. Oh, I'm going to send a shout out to my husband. We've been married three years now. I shouldn't have said that because you're going to be like, oh, well, she got all them kids. That so no, he's not the baby's daddy. But anyway, he's a good man. Some people think so and some people think not, but it's okay. It's my prerogative. <laughs> Sunny Wells, if you listen, no, you sleep because you got a night job. Anyway, he sleep. So, but I got to do my thing, you understand, because I got to hold up the light. Kiki, you getting it right, baby? She getting me right. She getting my, my, my shot right. You know, this is my close-up. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> okay. So, now, I can go from one thing to another. So, where am I? What should I say now? I, where did I leave off at? I have so much stuff here. Um, I have this book that I love this book. Now, this was written by a man, Aisha Kamusa Barashango, I think, Barashango. This is called African Woman, the Original Guardian Angel. Very powerful book. Now, I'm going to say this. I think we've been a victim of fraud and deception when it comes to religion We've been deceived. We've been bamboozled. They've lied to us. Everything is not all the way, all the way correct. So I want y'all to know, stop trying to judge people based on what you think you know, because you don't know but the half of it. And you probably don't even know that much of it because everything has been misconstrued to keep you off. You understand what I'm saying? The powers that are not the good powers, they want you to be confused. They want you to be all off. They want you to have your, your power diminished and watered down. But I'm going to tell you, you have to seek for the truth and the knowledge so you can strengthen your power and you can walk in the fullness of what God has called for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You should. So I have gotten some understandings based on some of the readings in this book. And this book... It was, I think, written in the 90s, and he has written some very powerful stuff. So the African woman, the original guardian angel, you guys Google this. Google this. Google this and find out for yourself. Reading encourages you. Reading inspires you. Reading educates you. Read, honey. Read. Read some truth. Don't read no uh, lies and facts that, I, I mean, that facts are truth, right? But don't read no... No, no, no crap. I have so much stuff here to pull out, but I can't pull it all out. I also, being a Wednesday's woman, have become a volunteer. Look, I'm so proud of my badge. <laughs> badge of honor. With the Department of Mental Health. Now, they told me when I was a little girl, well, they didn't tell me, they told my stepmother that I needed psychiatric treatment. <gasps> I was in elementary school, and when she told me that the teachers told her that about me, I was like, what? And I started praying to God. I was 10 years old. I, I, honest the truth. Honest the truth. She told me that I was 10. And I remember getting on my knees and I prayed and asked God to give me wisdom. Now, who knows about wisdom, especially in 1970? No, I didn't know about it. Why did I know that word? But somehow I found out about it. And I prayed and asked God to give me wisdom earnestly. So I don't think it kicked in until I was like in my 20s. Because to me, I just was like on a whole nother planet, you know. However... I'm here with you today sharing Wednesday's Woman. So 
I have become a volunteer with the Department of Mental Health, County of Los Angeles, because I feel my abilities to communicate with not only women, I communicate with women, children, uh, men. I communicate with people because I think that's my job. That's my gift. I, I feel I'm, I help people. I feel I have healing uh, gifts to help heal and deliver you, you know, from, from issues because I it's worked on myself. I, I've worked on myself. I still work on myself, okay? But anyway, I'm a volunteer with them, and I know there are a lot of other women that are hurting through many more situations than I've ever experienced that I probably will never, ever experience, but still we're there for them. And I want to inspire others to get involved with local organizations that help people better themselves. Women are coming out of prison. They are coming out of uh, domestic violence, relationships. They're coming out of all kind of situations, and we need to be there prepared to receive them. They need housing. They need transportation. They need finances. They need to get their children back from the system. It's a lot that's going on that we don't want to glorify all of that, but we want to say we're here to help. So I put my hat in the bid to be a volunteer. So I'll be going back probably tomorrow to spend some time, and I'm there to bring creativity to them, you know, help them with poetry, and there's some of their poets. I want to also give a shout out to Dr. Rosie Milligan, a powerful Wednesdays woman. She has been doing the Black Writers on Tour for 18 years now, and I got a copy of this book. I didn't get a chance to go, but it's a picture of Dr. Rosie Milligan. Can you see her right there? That the little one right there. I don't know. Yeah, that's Dr. Rosie Milligan. So. She's a writer. She's also into health and wellness. She talks about how to love a black man. She tells that black woman, you better treat your husband like he's a king. Don't don't mistreat your man now. Don't don't leave him wanting. And don't leave him, you know, going looking next door to the neighbors because you're not taking care of business. So, you know, these are some powerful women uh, that were in this program. This is another powerful sister that was in the book. So... We're connected to powerful women, uh, Miss Claudette Robinson, the first Mrs. Robinson of Mr. Smokey Robinson. That's a serious woman. She is the first lady of Motown. I definitely will be calling her and having her on my show because we've been talking about doing some shows for the longest. So these are women that I know that are powerful women. And I want to give a shout out to all of them. I can't call. Oh, KK, my girl, KK. She's all the way in Baltimore. She left me too. All my friends left. All the ones that didn't pass away, these others just packed up and moved away. You know, I'm here holding up the light in L.A. Oh, I got two minutes? No, I got less, more than that. Okay. So, oh, now, this was my CD. Oh, is it probably shining, reflecting off the plastic? Now, I was selling these, and I was also giving them away and taking donations for them. I probably gave more away than I actually ever got money for. But the point of it is, it's better to give than it is to receive. Because guess what? When you give, there's always something there for you whenever you need it. Somewhere, somehow, it's always going to find you. You'll never be without because you're a giver, okay? So if you want to get a copy of my CD, I was asking for $10. And some people would give me 10 Then I would say, whatever you'd like to give just to help me keep my music ministry going, I would receive it. And so they would give me 10 Some would give me 5 One gave me a dollar. You know, well, not one. A few gave me a dollar. So... The bottom line is, it's better to get this music out into your ears so you can hear it. So I have a few left, and I'm going to be getting some more and other tracks and stuff. We'll be looking for new music, too. So my sons, Lance, Jared, and Christian, they produce music. And you know how it is tough sometimes working with your parents. You don't really feel like working with your parents. <laughs> I can't complain because I know they know their mama is a little interesting. But they love me. That's the bottom line. And I want to give a shout out to who else? My family, my brothers. And I have a brother who's turning out. Well, yes, he's turning 80, 80 years old. Yes, he's my oldest brother. And so he's turning 80 years old in July on the 24th. And so he's going to have his 80th birthday party. I heard it through the grapevine. I didn't get my invitation yet. But he's turning 80 and he's going to have a birthday party in Las Vegas. Yes. So guess what? gonna be there i'm gonna crash the party but anyway so i'm gonna give a shout out to you big brother and my other brother al and my dear brother robert and my sister lorena my other sister yolanda Gwinetta, and then Teresa and ava my other brother michael that's all my brothers this is about 10 i think it's about it was that 10 of them you counting it's about 10 of them so and i already said something to you mama 
I said something to all my children, Asia, Lance, Jared, Christian, Sharice, okay, grandbabies, Leilani, that's my mom. And then Diamond, I have a beautiful grandbaby named Diamond. She's a year old, she's so beautiful. So I'm a real woman, okay? I have breastfed my babies, all natural birth, honey, and I did my job, okay? Yes, I've been married more than once, more than twice, more than three times, but I'm done it for. And sometimes people will say, God ain't honoring all the marriages, but you know, there was a woman in the Bible, that they said she had five husbands, and he told her the one that you with ain't your husband. So that means she had more, had more than five men. You understand? <laughs> well, that's not uncommon in today's life. You understand? We don't want to give up all the business, but you know when I... Praise the Lord. So Wednesday's woman, we have job information. Now, this may look familiar to some of you. We are looking for people who want to go out and help uh, convert the energy from, you know, one gas company to another company. They're paying a little bit of money to go out and knock on doors and talk to people. So if you want to get involved with that, call me 323-239. 9439. That's my number. 323-239-9439. By the time this show is over, you will probably memorize my number. Call me even if it's not on a Wednesday. Just to call me and say, hey, what's up? And uh, what else can I say? Oh, my girl, Elisa Russell, my Mary Kay diva. Shout out to you. Uh, Miss Gamble, all my Wednesday's women friends. Erica. Y'all know who you are. I just want you all to know that I love you. And Sister Carla, uh, Sister Love, Peggy Delcor, oh my goodness, Augusta, Mary, all you people, you are Wednesday's woman now. I didn't call your name out. I expect y'all to send me a love offer, send me a donation. <laughs> you know y'all church folk, you know how to give. They done taught you how to give. They passed that plate around 20 times and you put something in it. Now, I'm passing it around for me. Send me something so I can stay on the air because, you know, it costs money to be on the air. Don't be playing. Don't be fooling stuff. If you want to be on the air, it won't cost you a whole lot, but I can help you. But you got to ask for me, okay? Now, that number that you could have called in on the studio, 323-965-1600, you might be able to get some information on that number. If not, do the three two three two three nine number, then you know you're going to get me. If I don't answer, just leave a message. I love you. Now, you know, in this studio, we drink pit bull. And I have to admit, I drank a can of this. You see, this is a big can. Wow, yeah, Dude, I was tripping. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot of juice. That vitamin B12 and all that stuff that was in there, it had me hyped, okay? So I was like, woo, it works, baby. It make you feel like a pit bull i guess <laughs> so we want to thank mr hudson for pit bull we want to thank him also for rmc because this is the state of the art studio this is the place you need to be if you want to be live on tv internet i'm worldwide did you know that i'm worldwide so now i'm gonna get better in my promotions and i'm gonna have more people here and they're gonna interact more and then you're gonna find out more things now if there's anything that you want to know we're gonna do makeovers and stuff see if you saw me when i first came in i really was looking toe up but it's okay because it gets better. I told Mr. Morris, I said, I'm going to, you know, refine myself as this lady because Wednesday's woman, she's all that. I'll be in here sometimes with my hats, my first lady hats and stuff, my gloves, because that's what a woman is. She's a woman of elegance as well. And we're going to teach etiquette to our young ladies, our young women. We're going to teach etiquette and everything. So do I... Sh do I have some more music? I was going to play Elder Johnson's song. Okay, we got to play a song for Elder Johnson. Listen, y'all, Elder Andrew Johnson, Pastor Andrew Johnson Sr., He's turning 70 this year, June 24th. You can put it on, baby, and I'll still be talking under a little bit. He's turning 70. He's going to be having a wonderful gospel concert on June the 20th. That's a Friday, June 20th, at Greater New Canaan Church of God in Christ, right in the city of Los Angeles, 5835 Brentwood Avenue. That's on the, well, it's almost on the corner. The parking lot's on the corner of Slauson right off of Broadway, okay? If you know the area, you know the big church, it's right there. You can not you can see it off the freeway too, you can't miss it. So that's Friday, June 20th at seven o'clock, gospel concert. Now I'm the MC. So if you like what I've been doing a little bit here on tonight, you'll probably get a little more. I'll keep it a little um because I'll be in the church. So I will be the MC. Um, 
Pastor Johnson comes from a musical film. Is the song playing? It's playing. Y'all can hear. Okay. He's come from a musical family. You can hear that. And his sister, Carolyn Johnson White, will be singing. And his brother, Samuel Johnson, will be on the organ. And And little Mike, that's my little godson. So it's a whole affair, family affair on Friday, June 20th. You guys got to come. Send a love offering to Pastor uh, Johnson. I don't have the P.O. box, but I do have the address again to the church, 5835 Brentwood Avenue in the city of Los Angeles. I believe the zip is 90035. And if you can't get there, call me. If you want any more information, call me. And is that song still playing? Okay. So I'm going to shut up and let the song play because I think that's the end of the show. Tune in next week and see Wednesday's Woman. I'm going to be better. I promise. I promise. I come on at 830. Please, please, please support me. I love you. Mwah.